Examination of the motor system includes inspection, as well as assessment of muscle strength, muscle tone, muscle bulk, and fine motor movements. Test and compare both sides of the body whenever possible. Begin the motor exam with inspection. Most of the motor exam can be done with the patient sitting. Inspect for asymmetry in posture that could indicate muscle imbalance. Note any involuntary movements, such as tremors or tics, as well as their relationships to movement and position. Inspect the muscles for atrophy, hypertrophy, and fasciculations. Inspect both proximal and distal muscles, for example, both the shoulders and hands. In the hands, specifically inspect the hypothenar and thenar eminences and the dorsal interosseous muscles, which decrease in size with aging in normal people. Test strength by assessing resistance to force. Grade strength on a scale from 0 to 5 as described in the text. Begin with the neck and progress caudally. Test strength of neck extension with the chin on the chest. Have the patient extend against the resistance of your hand. Stabilize her chest with your other hand. Test strength of neck flexion with the head raised. Have the patient flex against the resistance of your hand. Stabilize her back with your other hand. When testing the limbs, compare each limb to the other side. Pronator drift is a good initial screen for symmetry and weakness. Have the patient hold her arms in front of her with palms up and have her shut her eyes and hold her arms motionless for 20 seconds. Subtle weakness will manifest as a slight downward drift of one arm with inward rotation of the hand, termed pronation. If there is no drift, tap the arms downward and see whether they return smoothly to their previous position, suggesting intact strength, coordination, and proprioception. To test shoulder strength, have the patient abduct each arm, first to 90 degrees, and then 180 degrees. If she can do this, have her maintain abduction against resistance. Press down on each arm. It requires more strength to resist pressure distally, so if the patient is weak, press closer to the shoulders. With the patient's arm in the same position, put your hands below her arms and have her push downward. To test upper arm strength, have the patient flex her elbows to 90 degrees and push against your hands to test elbow extension, and then pull against your hands to test elbow flexion. If the patient is strong, you may need to stabilize her shoulder with one hand and provide resistance with the other. Test the strength of wrist extension and flexion. Test combined strength of hand muscles by assessing grip strength. Have the patient forcefully squeeze two of your fingers, then try to pull your fingers away. Avoid using three of your fingers because compression may be painful. Test interosseous muscle strength by having the patient spread and close her fingers. If she can do this, provide resistance using the same finger on your hand. Test strength of finger flexors by interlocking your fingers with the patient's and flex your fingers against each other. Test combined strength of the lower extremities and some trunk muscles by having the patient stand up and sit back down while holding her arms crossed. Test hip flexion by having the patient raise her knee from the bed. If she can do this, apply resistance. Inability to overcome resistance applied only with your hand indicates weakness of hip flexion. Test upper leg strength by having the patient straighten and then flex each knee against resistance. Test strength of thigh abduction by having the patient push her knees outward against your hands. Pushing inward tests thigh adduction. Test strength of ankle dorsiflexion by pressing down on the dorsiflexed ankle. Then test ankle plantar flexion by having the patient step on the gas against resistance. Inability to overcome resistance applied only with your hand indicates weakness. Test strength of foot inversion and eversion by applying resistance to those movements.
To test strength of hip extension, have the patient lie prone and lift her leg up off the bed. If she can do that, then apply resistance. Check muscle tone and fine motor movements, if not already done as part of the cerebellar exam. Assess tone by passively moving the patient's joints. For example, support the hand and forearm while moving the wrist. To detect subtle rigidity, particularly cogwheel rigidity, use reinforcement, which is voluntary movement of the contralateral side. Here, the patient opens and closes her left hand while the examiner assesses tone of the right wrist. To assess fine motor movements, see how rapidly and smoothly the patient can tap the thumb and index finger together. You can also use wrist rotation to test rapid alternating movements. For more information, see the video of the cerebellar examination.